Hey there guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be comparing Miro, an app that I've reviewed quite a bit on this channel, to a newer tool that's actually in beta called FigJam. And FigJam is created by a company called Figma, which is known for being a mock-up and graphic design tool that you can use online. It's cloud-based and it's a pretty sweet tool, um, but they actually came out with a Miro-like whiteboard tool and I'm just gonna be comparing the two today, and I think that you guys are going to be surprised with what FigJam has to offer. Yes, there may be some downsides switching off of Miro and heading over to FigJam, but FigJam also has some pretty cool features. So with that said, let me give you guys the comparison. We're going to rate each of these on a number of factors, and then at the end of this, you can make a decision of which app you wanna go with. All right, so hopping right in, I'm just going to compare the two of these on a number of factors. We're going to be uh, rating them on a scale of five, four, three, two, and one. And then at the end, I'll total up the scores and whatever uh, it comes down to, we'll say that's the winner, okay? So Fig Jam and Miro. We're gonna first look at using the pen. So what is the pen slash marker tool like? So in Miro, if you wanna select the pen, you can just click over here or you can click P on your keyboard and that will change to the pen tool. And that's going to allow you to just click and hold and then drag wherever you wanna go. Uh, and you can write things or you can draw little doodles and they give you three presets where you can change the thickness and you can change the color. So that's pretty neat. And then you can also switch over to the highlighter tool. You can add some highlights over anything that you want. If you want to, you can also add those presets for the highlighter. So you can change the color of the preset, the thickness, so it's pretty flexible. And then you can also switch to Smart Draw. And Smart Draw has three presets as well. So if I actually draw a circle, that's going to correct it. It didn't do it that time, but it did that time. So as you can see, I can draw like rough shapes. Let's try a triangle and it will uh, adjust it to be uh, perfect shapes. Let's try a diamond. Okay, that's not exactly what I was going for. Maybe a heart. Anyways, it's still a pretty cool feature. Uh, you can also use the eraser tool and the eraser tool won't erase these shapes um, except for my hearts and this bad circle uh, because these are now actually classified as shapes and they can be dragged around and whatnot and you can actually change the shape even after I've drawn it on. But the way that the eraser tool works is you can just drag it over any of the past movements that you made and it will erase them based on when you picked up off of the uh, clicker. So like this, for instance, would get erased, then that would, then that would. Uh, since I did these in one motion, those would completely be gone. And I kind of like the way that the eraser tool works. There's also the lasso tool, and you can sort of uh, grab things with this that you want to select, uh, and it's nice for getting into tight spaces, and then once they're selected, you can change the size of them if you want to. All right, now let's look at Fig Jam. So the pen tool in Fig Jam is called Marker, and you can hit M to pull up the marker, or you can click it here, and similar to Miro, it has the marker, and it does have a highlighter too that I'll show you in a minute. But if you click on the marker, you'll notice that you only have these colors to choose from. So in Miro, you can choose any color you want. Um, but in Fig Jam, you are limited to these colors and you don't get presets. Uh, and they have two thicknesses. So they have thin and thick. So for thin, this is what you get. And for thick, that's, that's what it looks like. But as you can see, as I'm like writing, it kind of corrects my uh, bumpy handwriting and smooths it out a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. Um, let me see if it does the shape finder. I don't think it does. So it doesn't have that shape finder uh, or that smart draw like Miro does. Uh, and then the highlighter is the same as the marker. Uh, you, you have two options here and then these are your color options for the highlighter. But I actually like how the highlighter looks a bit better on uh, fig jam. I, I just, I don't know. I think that it, it looks a little bit more like a highlighter. All right, let's try the eraser. 
So the eraser works the same. It's going to just erase the motion that you made. Um, so if I get rid of that, it'll, it'll get rid of each motion as I made it. So that is kind of how uh, the marker tool slash pen tool works in FigJam. So when comparing these two on the pen, I feel that Miro definitely did a lot better because it gives you a lot more presets. I, I really did like the uh, highlighter on FigJam though. I think it looks a little bit more realistic and it flows a lot better. Um, but overall Miro just has more options with the smart draw and the uh, multiple presets that you can set to pretty much any color in the spectrum. Whereas Fig Jam, you are limited to like six or seven colors and only two thicknesses. So Miro is a lot more flexible, has a few more features on the pen. So for Miro, if I'm comparing it to Fig Jam, I'm gonna give it a five. And we'll give Fig Jam a smiley face just because I, I did like that highlighter tool. And uh, let me know in the comments if you guys agree with me. I think it looked a lot better. Next, let's look at comparing these two tools on mind mapping because they're both pretty good at it, but they have some differences. So let's look at that. In Miro, when it comes to mind mapping, you can just click on these three dots here. And if you type in mind map, and then you click on this here, it'll give you this uh, little mind map tool and you can click around and you can click all the sides of it to add uh, different segments to the mind map. You can also change the color of the line that's connecting it like this. And you can continue adding to this and it could become a pretty large, pretty amazing mind map. Uh, the shortcut for this and the way that this works is if I'm selecting this and I hit enter, it will actually go uh, horizontally. But if I hit tab, it'll go down. So I can hit tab, tab as many times as I want and then I can hit enter, enter, enter. And this is a really quick, flexible, nice way to create a mind map. It's also important to note that in Miro, you can uh, pretty much mind map with any of their shapes or sticky notes or cards. So if I created some shapes, I could connect them with this connector arrow, like so. So I dragged that out. And then if I hit this button, it'll automatically create a mind map and I can add text within these if I want to. If you're interested in learning more about mind mapping and how to actually strategize a mind map and use Miro with mind mapping, I made a full video on it, so I'm going to leave that as a card up in the corner. You can check that out now or after the video, whatever you're feeling. All right, let's check out Fig Jam for mind mapping. So on Fig Jam, they don't have like a built-in mind mapping app like they do on Miro but they do have these sticky notes and you can connect them like so. So that works pretty similar to Miro. Uh, I like how the sticky notes in Fig Jam put a name on them for the creator of them. That way, like if you're collaborating or working with multiple people, you know, it shows the name underneath it. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it keeps things less confusing. If I click on this, I can also move it around similar to Miro and I can change the color of it. I can also just hit the plus button if I wanna add new sticky notes, but that's not going to uh, add the connector. I would have to come in and do that later on. So when comparing these two tools on mind mapping, I would say that Miro is the clear winner and I'm going to have to give it a five out of five once again. Now Fig Jam definitely can handle mind mapping, but I would say that it's not nearly as great of an experience as Miro and it's not nearly as quick as Miro for mind mapping, so I'm going to give it a three out of five. Next, let's go ahead and look at the text tool in Miro versus Fig Jam. So when it comes to using text in Miro, you can just hit T and that will pull up your text tool or you can click over here and you can drag out a box and you can start typing something and you can change the font size, you can change the font itself one thing I will note about Miro is the font choice is uh, pretty limited to just a few. So if you're designing like a website or if you're trying to uh, design like a mock-up or something like that, I wouldn't design a full website, but if you're doing like a mock-up, uh, they're just very limited on font choice. So uh, that is one gripe that I have with Miro, but they have enough if you're just trying to uh, create like a simple board. If you click this button right here, you can switch to a different shape and it will hold that text within it. You can bold your text, italicize it, underline it, or strike through. 
you can align it, all the typical tools that you're used to uh, with any sort of text writing application. Uh, you can also insert links and you can change the color to anything you want. If you scroll all the way down, I've got lots of colors in here. You just hit the plus button and you can select any color you want. Um, you can also highlight the text using this button right here. And then this button right here allows you to add a background to the text like so. And then we could drag that however we want it. We can make it bigger, but that's text in Miro. Now for FigJam, if I click the text tool and I draw out, uh, I can just start typing. And as you can see right off the bat, uh, there's no option to change the font. Um, you can't really change much about the text in FigJam. Uh, you can change the color. They do have their limited color options here. You can bold it, you can strike through it, you can't underline it. Um, let's see, what else? You can change the font size uh, to one of these uh, preset font sizes. But what I will note is that FigJam has these plugins. You can actually select the font that you want, and then if you go to plugins, hit change font, uh, it's actually going to load in some fonts, okay? So it's gonna load in all the fonts that I have on my computer, it looks like. Um, and I can just select uh, whatever font I want. So actually, in essence, like uh, you can add on a lot to FigJam. And I think that's what gives it a little bit of an edge, right? Like these plugins are pretty neat and I'll get more into them later in this comparison, but um, I would recommend uh, just checking them out. Get in here and, and see what you think. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the bold works with this, um, but the strike through does. So you can still change the color and whatnot, and you can pretty much import uh, all of those fonts. When it comes to text, I am a really big font person, and the fact that FigJam has that change font plugin, uh, I'm going to give it a four for that. And Miro, it definitely has a good text tool and it has a few more features than FigJam, but from a perspective of like just my own personal preference, I prefer FigJam's text tool over Miro's, I would say. Um, but I, I, just, I just think it's you've gotta be fair and you've gotta give Miro a four on this as well. Even though I don't love the Miro text tool, it is very flexible and you can change the font size and whatnot. And there are enough fonts in there to get by. Um, but FigJam, I think, did a little bit better on this. Now let's look at extra functionality. So for extra functionality, Miro actually comes with uh, some, some more options. If you click on these three dots right here, and it's the Miro apps. So if I hit get more apps, you'll notice that these are kind of like the plugins in FigJam, but I'll talk more about why I think FigJam's plugins are a bit better after this. Um, but yeah, these different companies basically integrate with Miro and you can uh, like upload Google Drive documents into here for instance, or you can play the dice on your Miro board. Like let's try that. Okay, so let's select these and hit dice. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting, kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you can do different things like that. There's just different apps that do different things. Um, but let's go over to FigJam. Now in FigJam, I've found that these plugins, which are similar to the apps, are a little bit more uh, robust, if you will. So if I go to something like Calc, right, and I hit Run, Run Calc, enter what you want to calculate. Um, let's just say two plus two, it'll give you four, boom, very nice. Let's also try timer. I think they've got a timer. Let's run that. And it will actually like pull up this embedded sort of like timer window. And I can start a timer over here. You can create different preset timers. Uh, if you're collaborating in here, that can be nice to uh, have multiple timers if need be. Fig explosion. Let's try this. Can I explode this here? I honestly don't know what this does. I think that the plugins aren't as limited, whereas in Miro, they want you to stick with their uh, ecosystem and only develop things that interact with their current setup, whereas you can kind of add new windows with FigJam. See, like they have spell check, they have that change font plugin that I showed you guys earlier. So 
I think that if they continue with this, they're going to have tons of plugins in here. And I think that they're community powered. So uh, people are constantly going to be uploading into this ecosystem. So uh, that's exciting. As you can see, uh, last updated, you know, last month, yesterday. So they are on top of this and they're constantly adding new plugins, it looks like. All right, so for extra functionality, I'm going to give FigJam a smiley face, just because I think it's still early, but I think they've got tons of potential. Miro is also really good, but I think they're a little bit limited. I'll give them a smiley face as well. Maybe I should give Miro, or I mean, maybe I should give FigJam a, a five on this, just because I, I do think that it's a, a bit better than Miro's uh, plugins uh, or apps, if you will. Now let's look at shapes and stickies in Miro. So the sticky notes in Miro are pretty cool. You can add lots of different colored sticky notes here. And if you select this, you're given, uh, what is this, 16 options for colors. You aren't given infinite options, but um, they are giving you quite a few here. You can add tags to sticky notes. So if I wanted to, I could add Carter Sirach here so that uh, you know they looked similar to the ones that we are creating in FigJam. And you can simply add text to these and it will conform based on how much text you add. You can also add these emojis right here, which is pretty cool. So they're like little reactions to the sticky note. Outside of that, there's not really much to say about them. So in FigJam, you get these little sticky notes and you can click around and add them places. I don't see a shape tool. I thought that there was a shape tool in FigJam, but I'm not seeing it. So uh, let me know in the comments if I'm missing something, guys, but um, I'm, I'm not seeing that right now. So you can't uh, really like change the size of these sticky notes. You can, however, change the size of the text within them. So if I wanted to do a headline, and then hit enter let's see if i can go into normal so that is kind of nice that they have hierarchical text as far as colors go you get eight as opposed to miro where you get 16. and you can actually turn this signature on and off with this button right here if you click the plus button it will create sticky notes next to it or underneath it let's see what happens if i click between it it just pulls me to this one all right so that's sticky notes in Fig Jam. So for shapes and stickies, Miro has tons of different shapes. Um, Fig Jam just has sticky notes from what I can see. I thought that they used to have shapes, but I guess not. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing something, but uh, I didn't see the shapes in Fig Jam this time around. So I'm actually going to give Fig Jam a two on stickies and shapes and Miro is going to get a four. I think that they could improve on these. Um, they could add more to it. Uh, I like that FigJam has that signature feature, but um, it just doesn't hold up against Miro. Miro's just got a lot more options when it comes to your sticky notes. So I am going to still have this winning against FigJam. Now guys, keep in mind, as I'm brutally uh, rating FigJam here, they are in beta, I believe, and like I said, I really like that plugin feature. Um, but let's move on to the next feature, which is collaboration. Let's compare them on that. Now, Miro was kind of popularized because of the uh, new asynchronous work era that we're kind of headed into, and it's supposed to replace a whiteboard in a design sprint setting. So it's actually really good at doing this, I think. Uh, they have a presentation mode. Um, they have commenting so if i were to go to uh let's say let's say i created some spirals and then we hit comments that's going to pop out over here and if you don't have any comments on the board you won't see anything there but to add a comment you just click this button and you can comment and just say hey i like this spiral and it'll keep this little comment bubble here but it'll also pop up over here so if i kind of drag myself away from this and then I go into comments and click on this, it's going to pull me to the comment that I was uh, clicking on here. So that's kind of nice. You can also reply to the comment and it will show a feed of comments right here with replies, kind of in a Reddit style. They also have an overall chat right here. So you can just chat and that will show up in this company wide chat or this board wide chat. And you guys can talk about whatever it is you're looking at right here. 
if you create some cards and you're trying to you know sort of project manage maybe you could create some tasks and then you could expand and here you can write a description or you can create some bullets and you can even add a due date to this tags you can change it to whatever color you want and you can add an assignee so that's what it would look like out here but if I go into the cards view, you can see it right here. So you can work with multiple people and have different cards uh, and you can actually sort it by uh, just your cards too. So that if somebody is in here and they just wanna see their cards, they could click this at button. If you click this button down here, you can screen share and people can kind of follow you if you're in a group setting. And then there's voting, which is pretty neat. You know, you can set up the parameters for the vote uh, one per object, let's say, and then you hit start. And anybody in here can join the voting and then you can vote on whatever you want. So like, let's say we wanted to vote on uh, this card right here, because that's the only thing we can vote on. Um, it's only going to allow one vote per object, but as you can see, you can vote and then you would wait for the time to run out. But if I hit end for everyone, it'll give a result of who got the most votes or what object got the most votes so this is really great for like a design sprint or something like that there's also a video chat feature so if you're working with tons of different people you can hit start video chat and this is going to uh, pull in your face it's not pulling mine in right now because it's got the wrong camera feed on here but uh, you could have multiple people's faces in here and just be in a group chat so that's pretty neat and if you are in that group chat you can hit the timer button and you could start a timer and play some music if you wanted to while people work there's this reactions button right here which i think is pretty cool so if you click these it will uh, have those popping up on the board you can raise your hand so that the uh, host of the board can see that you want to say something and they have this really cool feature where you can bring everyone to you. So if you have a bunch of people on the board that you, you can bring them to wherever you are on the board to talk about what you're interested in or what you wanna highlight. And you can even create these breakouts. So you can create different frames and then you can break out into smaller groups and certain people can work in one frame and other people can work in another. Over here, there is this note button and right here you can create different blocks. So you can create headers, checklists, bullet lists, number lists. So this is nice if you are trying to uh, just take some brief notes or maybe write some tasks down and they even have some templates here. So if I click to do list, as you can see, and the reason I like this is because you don't have to leave the comfort of Miro into another app. You can have a task list, like a basic to do list right here. Now back into FigJam, you can share your board. People can collaborate similar to Miro. Uh, you can click this button right here to add a comment and it will create a list similar to Miro once again. And if I click on this collaborate button, uh, you can leave an emote wherever you want. You could leave a stamp if you wanted to. Yep, I really like this sticky note. And you can also use this cursor chat, which is pretty neat. It's a pretty good alternative to video. I, I think what you can do is just kind of like annotate things as you're going through something. So you could say, check out this sticky note and it'll show up on anybody else's screen who's looking at your board. So not, not quite as good as video chat, but it is a nice feature. And I would have liked to have something like that in like Google Docs back when I was, you know, working on projects in school. Uh, I would just quickly write things between people. Uh, and this was the, like a more legacy version of Google Docs, so maybe they have something now, but um, I would actually just type into the document uh, to communicate with people if I wasn't talking to them directly. So uh, that is a pretty cool feature, that cursor chat. And then they have this high five right here. Cute little interactive things that you can do. And they also have a timer. I don't know if they have music though, like Miro did. All right, so on collaboration, Miro is the clear winner. That's gonna get a five out of five. Miro is definitely looking like it's still the king of virtual whiteboarding apps, but FigJam, I would say, is hanging in there, and uh, we'll get into future outlook in a minute. Collaboration on FigJam was kind of depressing after going from Miro to FigJam. They did have a few cool features, but I'm feeling like this might be a two. All right, now let's look at the template library. So if I wanna look for templates in Miro, I can just click this button, or when you create a new frame, it will pop up uh, this window either way. And they have different use cases, and that's kind of how they categorize these templates. 
So these are pretty neat and they even have a community templates section where people can upload their uh, community templates and if you hit explore more templates, uh, this is going to be essentially a database of all of the templates that have been uploaded and shared uh, just by people that are using Miro. So let me just hit use this template, try out the system mapping toolkit. Okay, this is taking a while. I have a feeling that this is gonna be a large board. Oh wow, yes. Okay, this is very robust. So this is a pretty cool template actually. Context and problem statement, research question, system mapping goals. Then we go on to exploring the system, mapping the system, reflecting on your map, finding leverage, and it gives you all of these instructions. It's like a little work guide and they even give you, uh, you know, some systems thinking uh, information. So positive polarity, negative polarity. Uh, they talk about feedback loops, balancing loop. There's really a lot going into this. It's kind of confusing to look at, but this looks like something that I would definitely create when I'm just like in a creative mode. All right, I'm loving this, but let's get over to FigJam and see what they have to offer. So FigJam has a templates button too. I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see here, uh, it's set up pretty similar to Miro. Um, they've got quite a few uh, use cases right off the bat. And if I hit see more in community, they also have a FigJam community that uploads templates it looks like. So that's pretty neat. Uh, let's see what this connect four is here. Wow, this is very cool. I guess you can kind of just drop, drop these in, drag and drop them. I guess that's the idea of this. And these are the different teams that you can pick from. Okay, I see. So I can just drop these wherever I want them. Of course, you'd want to follow the rules, but uh, you know, we could connect four. So when it came to the template library, I would say that FigJam had pretty good options, but Miro, I think they have a bigger community. They have more options when it comes to designing these things. Uh, I did notice that FigJam has some like custom elements in there, which I think is pretty cool. And I don't really know how to pull those in. I'm assuming that you can pull them in from Figma, uh, FigJam's other like app that's kind of an extension of FigJam. Uh, so that was pretty neat that you can get like very custom with it. But as far as just sheer templates go, I would say that uh, Fig Jam might have some cute like games and stuff like that, but it's probably not going to stand up to Miro, <laughs> uh, not one bit when it comes to templates. Uh, I'm gonna give Miro a five on this and we're gonna give Fig Jam a three. Now let's talk a little bit about future outlook. So at times this comparison video might have been a little bit, um, I don't know, it might have been a little bit rude to kind of throw Fig Jam under the bus, but to be honest, they aren't there yet. And it is in beta, but I really do like what they're doing with those plugins. And I think that it's going to uh, open up a lot of opportunity. And I think that FigJam will eventually emerge as a Miro competitor, especially because it integrates with Figma, which is a popular wireframing tool that web designers use. So Figma as a company, I think, has an amazing future outlook. And so does Miro. I mean, Miro is doing great things. I would just say keep your eyes out for FigJam as they add more features and maybe, just maybe, someday they will compete with Miro. All right, so future outlook, I'm going to give Miro a five because they are so focused. They're one of the most focused teams I've seen um, and I think that they just really stay in their lane and they do what they do best. They're not just, they're not trying to go too crazy with it and they're just doing it really well. But I'm also going to give FigJam a five out of five because I think Figma is a great company and I think that they have a lot of potential. There's tons of potential built up for FigJam. So what does that make the total score? All right, so final score comes out to 28 FigJam, 37 Miro. I've gotta say, just upon my first impressions, I thought that Fig Jam was going to do a bit better against Miro. I thought that they were really kind of emerging as a true competitor, but Miro still seems to hold the top position. They still are the king of digital whiteboards. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below about some of these different features that we compared. And if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, like, and comment.